one. She believe in God. <laughs> I swear to, I don't want to swear on my grandma. Mm -hmm. I always swear on her when I'm talking to no. Alright, I swear. I'll for shake peanuts. on it. I swear on the peanut. I swear for peanuts. Yeah. I swear for peanuts. I'm going to shake on it. For real. Because they're going to be checking anyway. Mm -hmm. No, real shit. Move. I ain't got time for you right now. Tell him don't be mean. Fuck out my face, nigga. Tell him you ain't see him all day. Little furry butt. Get the little furry butt out my face. What you was doing sitting on your phone for a minute? Got stuck on fucking. Now they got YouTube reels? Yo, them reels be having me, yo. I saw. Shit. Yo, Joe Rogan was talking to somebody about that metaverse, and now you, you go to Facebook, they call that shit meta now. I yo, know, I was just watching that video with Yo, the fucking homie, uh, Romeo been up on this shit for I, so fucking, he been doing this shit for like two years. Look at her face right now. I seen it by her nose. You think she got snapped? Chasing them damn cats. Mm. Matter of fact, I meant to, I just, I meant to send that shit to Romeo, and then I'm gonna... Oh, wow, boo. Stop. I, he gotta call me and explain hey, this shit. look. Yeah, that comes, she she chased the squirrel in the backyard and tried to run up in the damn fence. Oh, so you saw what she did to her son? She, yeah, she just oh. ran in the bushes too fast. Oh my goodness, fucking scratched her face baby. Up. What do you be doing to yourself? You look like a bad dog. Poor Bucky, you do too much. You do too much. And your father don't be watching you. Yeah, so nobody's coming but Antoine. Well, Antoine and Darnell. <sighs> yeah, this metaverse shit about to be fucking the next wave or whatever. And then popping. I don't think I meant to come up here because I didn't bring anything with me. <laughs> Cold Astro World News Conference. What is this? Travis Scott. Hmm? Travis Scott. Yeah. The rapper with the concert. What about what happened at the concert? Oh, the eight people died? Yeah, that was Travis Scott. And Good Drake. afternoon, everybody. It is Steve Lipner with Agenda Boy TV. If Steve talking about Travis Scott. With live coverage of today's police news conference on I need a jacket. I need a jacket. I need a jacket. I turn it on. on already. I should have. I don't know what's going to be said. Before it came up for news. They call it. A, the police said it was a news briefing. I've heard it about the news conference and press conference. I'm calling it news conference because I'm assuming they're taking Did questions. Anything for I can't ask you. I'm good for it now. I'm going with Go news ahead. conference right now. But anyway, oh, the police say they're providing an update on what happened. So, uh, you know, with, with this kind of thing, it could be some kind of big information. It could be very little new information. I honestly don't know. Uh, if I knew it was going to be no real new information, I wouldn't cover it. But... With these kind of things, you just don't know uh, what kind of issues is going to be given. So we're going to cover it. We're going to see what the police have to say. Uh, I, I wouldn't think they'd do an update for no reason, but who knows? Maybe they just want to do, look, they, they might just want to do an update to let, to let people know we're working on it. Uh, but uh, so, 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 you know, we'll just have to see what they say. Uh, that, that's the best I can tell you. And uh, hopefully we get more information. Um, but, you know, this, 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 uh, from what I've heard, this investigation is going to take a while. So by no means is the investigation complete. Uh, 
what we do know is that uh, eight people are dead. Uh, there's another person who uh, reportedly is brain dead, a ninth person. Then another person who's in a coma, a nine-year-old. So, um, tragic uh, situation. Many of you, probably most of you, heard about this uh, at the Astro World uh, Music Festival in Houston last Friday night. Uh, uh, a number of people died. Uh, there was, in, uh, there's, you know, it still has not. It still has been not, not announced the cause of death. That's something maybe that can be announced. I don't know, but. The cause of death of the people who died is not been announced, but there is plenty of video showing uh, extremely crowded conditions. Uh, I would miss it. Snake bite? Last one. So, you know, one would think that. Uh, Last snake bite down the drain. Crying, death yeah. being crushed. I'm trying to. Um, prime possibility for cause of death. So, the guy the wanted me to do some artwork for his beer cans. You have one of them. Yeah. The guy wanted to do some artwork for the beer cans. Who be sending me the beer? What if I just give him the um? Update coming no. What? Don't give him that. What? What you gonna give him? What do you think I'm gonna give him? Not the octopus. No, the black scratch images. I should at the very least have audio. So it's not totally clear to me what who's covering it and what kind of resources are gonna be, but it's definitely happening at 3:30. So. I'll get you what I can. Um, and you can see right here, media partners, Police Chief Tony Troy Finner will right, have a news up, briefing at 3.30 p.m. Central Time, that's 4.30 Eastern, at Houston Police Headquarters to provide an update on the Astro World Fest right, that was the mass casualty one. incident. Uh, and that's going to happen in 55 minutes. So we're going to be uh, taking your comments and questions. Oh, do I not save those in here? Um, I do want to say a thanks to our moderators, uh, by the way. Let me say a quick thanks to our moderators and then take some comments from you guys and questions uh, at Lukner on Twitter. But uh, Sarah Joy, Yo, that thank name you Sarah, was good. Sarah Joy is moderating in our YouTube chat. And also, hang on one moment. How come I can't find the green girl with the green background? Where's this thing at? It's not that far. It can't be that far back in the camera. Really. Uh, Duck Sword Schulteis on the moderating over there on Twitch. I also want to give an update on the, on the two other people who. They, they're not. Where is, where is that noise coming from? That is coming from here. Sorry, hang on a second. Let me just deal with this issue. Kayla Rivaki is my Jeez, boo. I gotta take you to the vet this weekend. Uh, take you on Friday. So I want to give an update um, on the two people who we heard about who are not dead but seem to be, well, one of them is brain dead. Um, by the way, our viewer. I'm gonna have to grab my tablet because for some reason I don't. Yeah, it's really terrible. Um, so here is uh, an update on message. one of the people who's not one of the official dead. Hmm? But it's brain dead apparently. Uh, Texas A&M student has no brain activity after being injured during Afterworld Festival. Family says. So this is from uh, ABC 13 right Houston. A 22-year-old Texas A&M University senior has shown no brain Yo, activity. you know it's the time of the year where, where even when you didn't apply for after jobs, after job after offers be coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, Barty. Yo. I'm going to need all these janitorial jobs to leave me the hell alone. I ain't scrubbing nobody's floors for $14 an hour. Not ever. McDonald's probably paid $14 an hour to flip burgers. Why would I not floors? Uh, her cousin said one person fell. People started toppling like dominoes. It was like a sinkhole. People were falling on top of each other. But how many people were at in, in the crowd? And it was a dark. How was he supposed to see? And leave to stay alive. Barty was taken to the hospital by ambulance. Paramedic gave her seat here on the way. Uh, both her cousin and her sister lost their cell phones and they couldn't find her. Once we let go of her hand, the next time we saw her, we were in the ER. Said her sister, I believe. Yeah, it's really terrible. And, uh, the parents went to the hospital. The parents rushed to multiple hospitals before they found their daughter. They took us to her room and she was bleeding and on a ventilator. 
Alright, so I did that. What else I needed to do? That shirt that I wore today, I'm just watch that and wear that shirt, the dark blue with the dots on it. I'll wear that. Okay. I mean, even that other one is white and black. I know it's bright, but I feel like funerals don't always gotta be all dark. But yeah, you want me to uh, pack your bag for you so you don't have to do it. You can just tell me what you want. Yeah, I gotta check the weather for down there too. I gotta check Virginia, bro. I'm gonna be in Virginia for a day, but well, not even a day. I said I get there Friday night, then we leave on Sunday morning. Oh, y'all not leaving till Sunday morning? I mean, Saturday, <coughs> Saturday morning. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I was thinking since I'm gonna be going <coughs> oh, down anyway, I might kick a bunch of you on Friday if you want. And you can find the link at this article on ABC 13. So that's her, that's Barking. Yeah. So. <coughs> there may be GoFundMe for She'll leave even have to work, so. so uh, I'm, I'm driving my car, we're driving separate. Yeah. The, uh, I'll probably already be on the road the before you are. That's when the soul won't be that bad, like I'll already be there, because I'm planning on being there Friday during the day. Now she's not one of the eight people who's officially yeah. dead. So, she's an get the dog dropped off to my mom, or to her my mom's house. That's I do not, I gotta go do my missions. And then, the one other person I want to update you on is the nine-year-old boy. So, yeah. That's not a big deal, I'm just saying. I'll already be out there on that side, so. This is from K-H-O-U. Nine-year-old Ezra Blunt is fighting for his life after being trampled at Astroworld Family uh, Festival Family Sit. The boy's aunt says he's an outgoing performer who loves to sing and dance. Travis now he's nine years old at a Travis Scott concert. It don't make no sense. It really don't. Although I went to see Beyonce and Robin Thicke when I was like 10. With an adult. any part of owning your own business, then you need income. Getting your business started does not have to be daunting. My hobby started making me money, and ink. Yo, I was watching... Yes, I was listening to him all day today on my ride. Yeah, Are there extra dimensions? This uh, two different channels. One is called Big Think, and one is called Closer to Truth. Are there extra dimensions? The universe in a nutshell, and three mind blowing predictions about eradicating cancer and having toilets that can just detect stuff in your blood and urine like oh you have this many amount of cancer cells so we're gonna do this now so it don't turn into a tumor and tumors will be obsolete and robots to take care of us and to colonize Mars he's amazing I, I agree with I agree with everything he says he's like my new Neil right now Today's modern science era. Our welcome extends to hundreds of thousands of people who are watching on the internet at debate.org. Bill, Bill Nye debates Ken Ham. Ham. We're joined by 70 media members. This is years ago. This is seven years ago. Great news organizations. We're glad to have them here as well. And now we'll welcome our debaters, Mr. Bill Nye and Mr. Ken Ham. Mm 
I hope you say, oh man, that picture looks amazing. I was like, all right, well, you owe me this much, send me an address. It was like two days ago, a motherfucker like, never replied to that shit yet. Are you really mad about the background movie? It don't matter what you mad about, but um, our contract says it was seven days after the piece is done. If you don't make your final payment within seven days, that shit go up for, to the highest bid, yo. I'll uh, that it shit. went very well. Mr. Ham won the coin yep. toss. And he opted so I got $50 to out of him to do that shit. If I can get another $50 to charge more than that. Mr. Yeah. Nye's website describes him really as a scientist, cute. engineer, comedian, author, really and inventor. Mr. Nye, as you may know, produced a number of award winning TV shows, including the program in the game Solo. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. That was an she was, Jen was so irky about that shit. Oh, they're putting the letters up today. We're getting our letters up. We're getting our sign up. We're getting a new sign today. Oh, this is Jane. Yes, that's not Jane. That's Jen. No, this that's Carol. Bill Nye is the television series. I really like her. Yeah. I don't think you ever met Jane, right? Jane was at the Square that day. Largest space interest group oh, is He's from Australia. And so it doesn't I thought matter he said what I, say. I was like, oh, what? Tell me. We just like to hear saying it. So, um, I hope you enjoy me saying it anyway. Well, the debate topic is this. Is creation a viable model of origins in today's modern scientific era? You know, when this was first announced uh, on the internet, uh, there are lots of statements like this one from the Richard Dawkins Foundation. Scientists should not debate creationists, period. And this one from one of the discovery.com websites. Should scientists debate creationists? You know, right here, I believe there's a gross misrepresentation in our culture. Uh, we're seeing people in, in being indoctrinated to believe that creationists But that's creationists the thing. I think, I think Bill Nye only has, like, honorary doctorates. He's not, like, a legit I want you to scientist or anything. Scientist he just knows a bunch of scientists. My name is Stuart Bates. I'm a professor of engineering design at Bristol University in the UK. My name is Stuart Bates. I'm a professor of engineering design at Bristol University in the UK. I have published over 130 scientific papers on the science of design in engineering and biological systems. From my research work, I have found that the scientific evidence fully supports creationism as the best explanation to origins. I've also designed major parts of spacecraft launched by ESA and NASA so here's a biblical creationist who's a scientist who's also an inventor. And I want young people to understand that. You know, the problem, I believe, is this. We need to define terms correctly. Uh, we need to define creation, evolution in regard to origins, and we need to define science. And in this opening statement, I want to concentrate on dealing with the word science. I believe the word science has been hijacked by secularists. Now, what is science? Well, the origin of the word comes from the classical Latin scientia, which means to know. And if you look up a dictionary, it'll say science means state of knowing, knowledge, 
But there's different types of knowledge, and I believe this is where the confusion lies. <laughs> there's experimental <laughs> observational science, as we call it. That's using the scientific method, observation, measurement, experiment, testing. That's what produces our technology, computers, spacecraft, jet planes, smoke detectors, looking at DNA, antibiotics, medicines and vaccines. You see, all scientists, whether creationists or evolutionists, actually have the same observational or experimental science. Who is a great scientist, Craig Vender, one of the first researchers to sequence the human genome. Or Dr. Raymond Damadian. He is a, a man who invented the MRI scanner and revolutionized medicine. He's a biblical creationist. But I want us to also understand molecules to man evolution belief has nothing to do with developing technology. You see, when we're talking about origins, we're talking about the past. We're talking about our origins. We weren't there. You can't observe that, whether it's molecules to man evolution or whether it's a creation account. And when you're talking about the past, we like to call that origins or historical science, knowledge concerning the past. Here at the Creation Museum, we make no apology about the fact that our origins or historical science actually is based upon the biblical account of origins. Now, when you research science textbooks being used in public schools, what we found is this. By and large, the origins of historical science is based upon man's ideas about the past, for instance, ideas of Darwin. And our research has found that public school textbooks are using the same word science for observational science and historical science. They arbitrarily define science as naturalism and not as supernatural. They present molecules to man evolution as fact. They are imposing, I believe, the religion of naturalism or atheism on generations of students. You see, I assert that the word science has been hijacked by secularists in teaching evolution to force the religion of naturalism on generations of kids. Sector evolutionists teach that all life developed by natural processes from some primordial form, form, that man is just an evolved animal, which has great bearing on how we view life and death. For instance, as Bill states, It's very hard to accept for many of us that when you die, it's over. But you see, the Bible gives a totally different account of origins, of who we are, where we came from, the meaning of life, and our future. That through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, but that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Whoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. So, is creation a viable model of origins in today's modern scientific era? I say the creation-evolution debate is a conflict between two philosophical worldviews based on two different accounts of origins or science beliefs, and creation is the only viable model of historical science confirmed by observational science in today's modern scientific era. And that is time. I had the unenviable job of being the timekeeper here. So I'm like the referee of football that you don't like, but I will periodically, if either one of our debaters runs over on anything, I will stop them in the name of keeping it fair for all. Uh, Mr. Ham, thank you for your comments. Now it's Mr. Nye's turn for a five-minute opening statement. Mr. Nye. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I very much appreciate you including me in your uh, facility here. Now, looking around the room, I think I see just one bow tie. Is that right? Just one. I'm telling you, once you try. Oh, there's, yes, two. That's great. I uh, started wearing bow ties uh, when I was young in high school. My father showed me, I, his father showed him. And uh, there's a story associated with this, which uh, I find remarkable. My uh, grandfather was in the Rotary, and he uh, attended a convention in Philadelphia. And even in those days, at the turn of the last century, people anyway. rented. Tuxedo. And the tuxedo but came with a, a bow tie, untied bow tie. So he didn't know how to tie it. So he wasn't sure what to um, lie down with it. So my grandfather, when I mean, he wanted to have the tie on, wasn't sure he was getting into it. So he is said to have lain on the bed, and the guy tied a perfect bow tie knot. And quite reasonably, my grandfather said, Thank you. Uh, why'd I have to lie down on the bed? The guy said, I'm an undertaker. That's really the only way I know how to do it. Now, that, that, that story was presented to me as a true story. It may or may not be. But it gives you something to think about, and it's certainly uh, something to remember. So here tonight, we're going to have two stories, and uh, we can compare Mr. Ham's story to the story of from what I would call the outside, from mainstream science. The question tonight is, does Ken Ham's creation model hold up? Is it viable? 
So let me ask you all, what would you be doing if you weren't here tonight? That's right, you'd be home watching CSI. CSI Petersburg. Is that coming? I think it's coming. And on CSI, there is no distinction made between historical science and observational science. These are constructs unique to Mr. Ham. We don't normally have these anywhere in the world except here. Natural laws that applied in the past apply now. That's why they're natural laws. That's why we embrace them. That's how we made all these discoveries that enabled all this remarkable technology. So CSI is a fictional show, but it's based absolutely on real people doing real work. When you go to a crime scene and find evidence, you have clues about the past. And you trust those clues, and you embrace them, and you move forward to <coughs> convict somebody. Uh, Mr. Ham and his followers have this remarkable view of uh, a worldwide flood that somehow influenced everything that we observe in nature. A 500-foot wooden boat, eight zookeepers for 14,000 individual animals, every land plant in the world underwater for a full year. I ask us all, is that really reasonable? You'll hear a lot about the Grand Canyon, I imagine, also, which is a remarkable place, and it has fossils. And the fossils in the Grand Canyon are found in layers. There is not a single place in the Grand Canyon where the fossils of one type of animal cross over into the fossils of another. In other words, when there was a big flood on the Earth, you would expect drowning animals to swim up to a higher level. Not Bronx any Zander. one of them did. Not yeah, a yeah, single Bronx. one. What if up, you bro? could find evidence of that, my friends, you could change the world. Now, I just want to remind us all, there are billions of people in the world who are deeply religious, who get enriched by a wonderful sense of community from their religion. They worship together, they eat together, they live in their communities and enjoy each other company. Billions of people, but these same people do not embrace the extraordinary view that the earth is somehow only 6,000 years old. That is unique. And here's my concern. What keeps the United States ahead what makes the United States a world leader is our technology, our new ideas, our innovations. If we continue to eschew science, eschew the process, and try to divide uh, science into observational science and historic science, we are not going to move forward. We will not embrace natural laws. We will not make discoveries. We will not uh, invent and innovate and stay ahead. So if you ask me if Ken Ham's uh, creation model is viable, I say no. It is absolutely not viable. So uh, stay with us over the next period and you can compare my evidence to his. Thank you all very much. Uh, very nice start by both of our debaters here. And now each one will offer a 30-minute illustrated presentation to fully offer their case for us to consider. Mr. Ham, you're up. Yo, Bronx, I gotta show you something, bro. <clears throat> Guys. Well, the night topic. There was no art, man. And every, uh, all the different kind of amoebas and germs and bacteria and, <clears throat> I mean, even the, the micro world. You know, all the, like, there's literally, like, millions of, of upon millions of different varieties of animals just in the ocean alone that some of them can't survive in uh, fresh water some of them can't survive in salt water most of them have to be at deeper pressures it is like <clears throat> all the trees and the foliage and everything like it the whole Noah's Ark story don't make no sense and then the world just returns to normal in like one or two generations. <clears throat> Yo, check out my new personal record, bro. Yo, Bob. So that's that's two forty-five pound plates on each side. That's one 25-pound plate on each side and one 10-pound plate on each side.
I'm really, really surprised I did that shit. Bob said hi from Ireland. Yeah, say what up, Bob? All right, one more time, just so y'all know. Just one more time so y'all know I did that shit for real, yo. And I touched my chest with the bar. I went all the way down. Bap. Oh. Oh, my God. Don't drop that shit. Don't drop that shit, boy. Push that shit, boy. Woo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boy, my new record, boy. <clears throat> I got a new record. 295. 295. All I need to do is be able to add <clears throat> 10 more pounds, yo. I'll be good after that shit, yo. If I can bench 305, I'm good. I don't ever. Yeah. I bench, I bench 305, I'll never need to go up higher than that, yo. I mean, they ain't, I mean, what's the point? I see, like, I know, like, some dudes want to be super big and super strong, but I just want to be strong enough to open the pickle jar with no problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be strong enough where I can defend myself. Damn, I delete all my workout videos. I don't got no more of them shits in here. It should be taking up a lot of space, though. I try to delete a lot of my videos now just because they take up so much space on my damn phone, yo. But I still got these. He said, I can do that on the moon. Pain. I have need to hit U.S. grocery shelves by 2022 after acquired approval by FDA and what? USDA. Not the lab-grown meats. We got to stop eating all the, the cows. What they, to you for cheaper? Too many cows, flagellates, is destroying ozone layer. Yeah. Yeah, now a steak going to be $30 for one. One steak. Uh, Bob said, I lifted my fingers to type this comment. Damn. That's that's good enough. Yo, who's getting the uh the the ultimate uh collection for the GTA shit, yo? Guess who's the first to roll it out? Who? An Israeli company. Man, yo. Called Future Meat Technologies has built its first lab grown meat plant in which it plans to use bioreactors to churn out cell cultured meat for American restaurants. <clears throat> and it is soon to be grown in petri dishes in a high tech laboratory. Uh, a Rod's getting that money, man. Also known as cell cellular meat, production of the product involving retrieving stem cells from a live animal's muscles and then culturing them into a nutrient-rich liquid. All right, what's the name of the company? Uh, Future Meat Technologies. Yeah. So. Wow, 
love Zip Bronx, LOL. I want to play GTA 3 again. Future Meets Technology? Future Meet Technology. Future. No. Look up <clears throat> uh, if they got a stock name. Oh, wow. That's all you worried about. Yep. The got FDA in. and USDA quietly gave lab meat the green light back Damn. in 2018. The FDA will oversee cell collection, cell banks, and cell growth and differentiation, with the, while the USDA will oversee the production and labeling of the poultry and livestock. He said it's, it's soil and green as people. Tyson and Cargill are the top two investors in lab-grown animal protein technology so far. Yo, Bob. I know Cargill, but Tyson, of course. Me too, man. I want to. I want to play that fucking GTA remake. Yo, all my stocks are fucking down though. Like Lucid is down, but Lucid Motors. I'm not selling none of these shit, yo. I think I'm gonna just keep investing in all of them, but I'm I'm mostly investing in uh, advanced micro devices and, and quantum space, yo. So, quantum space. These motherfuckers is uh, what it say? It's a technology company. Uh is engaged in developing and the development of next generation solid state lithium metal batteries for use in electric vehicles so these motherfuckers yo quantum space is a battery manufacturer Hold on. You asked for names? Oh. But the future meat is worth a lot of freaking money. They were able to raise 14 million in series of funding. Investors also included S2G Venture, Venture, ADM Capital, Emerald Technology Venture, Manta Ray Ventures, and Bits by Bytes. Earlier this year, Future Meat raised an additional $26.75 million in funding through its strategic partners. And in February, announced the production of a cultured chicken breast would have about a seven dollar and fifty cent price point. One cow sells from one cow can make five thousand hamburgers. That's so crazy. I don't know how I feel about cell meat. And Somebody said Beyond Meat, they make the uh, so, plant-based stuff. So, Mosa Meat, let me see if they got that on there. And Beyond is is a vegetarian or plant-based, but that's very popular. That's what they actually use in restaurants, mm. that and Morningstar. Mia Tech. That's the thing, is like, is it even available uh, for us? Beyond to? Meat. It's the only one that has some stock on here, and their stocks are down right now. What about Morningstar? But, damn, their shares are almost $100 a share. It's $94. Yes, that's not. because literally the, that's, that's, the Impossible Burger Bay, yeah. that's that. That's what that is. That's, yeah, that's still pretty cheap, though, for a share. Yeah. So all you got to do is like buy like three or four of those and they just hold on to them. They store, too, yeah. Beyond Me and um, Morningstar. See how they are, if they have anything. Because a lot of this stuff says it has a limited trade. I was going to tell Glennis, but I don't think she need to know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Anyone like to 
up. Yeah, she just asked me to go to Marywood with her on Friday afternoon to check out the architect class because they were supposed to do like some virtual designs for different spaces at our center. But they want us to come to the university to check out what they did. Just tell her that you got family. No, nah, I told her. I was like, dang, I'll be in South Carolina this weekend, yo. And I plan on leaving around that time, like right after work. Right. I know at, you want to go there at 2. That shit probably take like an hour or something. Then you going to hit all that traffic? Yeah, so I'm just... You just forgot about the stop there, Oh, damn. Morning star. have a different stock name. Mm -hmm. I say the companies sometimes their stocks don't be the same name as the same. company. What okay, so the, the one that we were talking about, Meat Tech, mm -hmm. try M I T C. Yeah, it should be shit like that. M I T C. It ain't on this one, but then I'm using two different ones too. So let me go to Webull and see if if Webull got these stocks. Yep, you can get it on. Yo, they shit only eight. On payday, I'm grabbing like 10 shares of their shit, you know? Yeah. And then. <clears throat> Soy like greens? No thanks. Yo. Mystery meat, now we have clone meat. I remember, I remember when Tesla stock went up to $420. Episode where he was on Joe Rogan and he smoked weed. Shit. He but then, for shock value, I feel yeah, like. but then right before that, they were lower. His stocks were like $150, $200 for a share of Tesla. He Yo, did he did. then they went up to 420 Yo, a share, one share of Tesla, that shit $1,200 now. Mm. So if you would have had like two or like just invested $300 when they were like, you know, a hundred something dollars a share, and you have like, that's what I can't wait. I'm trying to. Yeah, earn enough. MITC shit pop off. We're gonna be like that. Yo, and exactly. I'm trying to earn enough from other stocks so I can buy bigger stocks like that, yo. Because, like, Nike, Apple, like, a, you gotta have some bread to get that shit, yo. But they stocks don't always rise, though. Facts. Nike will always pretty much be around. Bob said Bronx. We are all sweet and green. Bronx said I have seen the future and it does not work. Oh, man. <laughs> Bob said if a company gets funding, it's definitely worth investigation. Yo, and then there's this other company I invested in because Jeff Bezos invested in that shit, yo. The shit called Alto. I think that's what the name of it is. Alto. Bronx said the Impossible Burger tasted like styrofoam. Ew. I've never had it, but so I've heard. Yeah, Altamont Green. Uh, he only had like three or four that looks like it may be promising. I say every every time I get paid, I just put like two hundred dollars into the stock market or crypto market. Yeah. He said, I'm, I have no idea how to sell it. Bronx says, sell it to me. I'll give you 80 euro for it. <laughs> Damn. Damn. You don't have to sell your Bitcoin. Then you can just spend them shits, yo. You rich. You got that many Bitcoins, yo. Yeah, most of these places haven't even launched something yet, so for the public. Or you can, um, you can, you can, yeah, they're not public stock shit, publicly traded. So as soon as they, that's why you gotta get the IPOs. Yeah, that's a lot of these say it'll become an I, available for IPO next year or yep. IPO next year, whatever. You get that IPO and, and get in like quick. That one, that should be like $2, $7. But then it's a big gamble, like if that shit actually do well or not. Bob said one Bitcoin is worth about 60000 
Oh, it's like 60 grand now? Let me see. Yeah, I think that was uh, sarcasm from Bronx. <laughs> I was about to say, I hope you ain't finna get swindled like that. Yeah, <clears throat> Bitcoins right now, one Bitcoin is $65,000 for one Bitcoin. Uh, one Ethereum is four thousand dollars, and Dogecoin is still at twenty six cents. So you can buy like a hundred dollars worth of Dogecoins and have like, you know, an ass of that shit. And if that shit ever really do pop, boom, money, money, money. you on top. You trade that shit for stocks. Do you sell your stocks? Cash the fuck out. I'm good. Yeah, sixty five thousand dollars for a Bitcoin. Mom said, Oh well, it was worth a shot. Good job, Bronx, because you was real smooth about that. <laughs>